Hey everybody, I'm Alexis. This is my husband Garrett. He's an ISFP, for those of you guys who are wondering. Today we're continuing the series about things we find annoying in the types. Um, so I want to clarify, it's mostly just a tongue-in-cheek title that we wanted people to click on. It's a little provocative. But really it's just like, how can people grow? And so we're going to talk about some of the things we find annoying about the types, but the lens is really through a lens of we like these types, we want them to be healthy, we want them to be balanced. I think there's a kind of a spectrum of healthy and unhealthy, and most of these traits that I talk about are going to come from unhealthy ISTPs, and you're going to see this as much from ISTPs, and it's just that, you know, you got four functions, there are like four tools in your tool belt, and if you're only using two of them, or you're only using one of them, you're really missing out on the full extent of your effectiveness. So yeah, I just want to make it clear that we really like this type. This is one of the types that we like a lot, but just want to give kind of a caveat about the series. Yeah, we're not just roasting you. We're creating some growth paths through annoyalities, as I call them. Annoyalities. <laughs> I don't know what it... <laughs> That's an annoyality. <laughs> um, All right, what do you like about the type? I love ISTPs. Okay, so just to clarify, so I made a list of types of people that I know in my life that I think are ISTPs, Probably 10 of them male, one female. So that's kind of something to note about when I'm talking about in this video. Unfortunately, I only know one to my knowledge. Um, but I love the principled nature of ISTPs. So easy to communicate with them. I feel like they have a goofy side that I like. And the, the biggest thing that I like is their sense of personal responsibility. They, you know, I feel like you hear a lot of FJs talk about boundaries or whatever, but ISTPs are the ones that have it nailed. Like they don't need to talk about boundaries because they just have it nailed. They're so principled. They have such a sense of personal responsibility and I'm responsible for myself. And I love that. I, I think it's, it makes it really fun to hang out with them. Yeah. Yeah, my, uh, I have a business mentor who uh, was like my boss for a while and he, he's an ISTP. He's phenomenal at personal responsibility. It's the big thing that I love about ISTPs too. Mm -hmm. um, they're just so direct. Like it, it blows me away how direct they are if, if there's something that is off or something that you offended or some so, something you did, they're just very direct, straightforward. It's not like, a, oh, I'm really upset. It's not a big blow up. It's just like, no, you just did this wrong. And it's very straightforward. Easy. Um, yeah. And then mm -hmm. I also like about them, just personally, as an SE user, I really admire them for their sports. It seems like ISTPs are really good at sports. And I like, like watching them play sports because they, it seems like they're really good at, uh, their technique normally so. they have super small movements yeah they're just like, like they're subtle. not the type that's like really whacking the tennis ball they just kind of like casually and they just like sorry spot they're also the type that's like says they're bad at stuff and then they beat everyone and they're like well yeah but i'm still not very good <laughs> <laughs> because it's kind of like that it's not an external metric it, to them it's not like if i'm the best one there then i'm good at it it's there's like there's objective measurement, and this is what being good is, and it doesn't matter if I'm playing with yeah. a bunch of bad people. <laughs> I've seen the professionals on TV, and I do not match. <laughs> yeah, they have super high standards for themselves. Mm -hmm. All right, let's get into it. Mistypes? Uh, oh, mistypes. Uh, just, there's often mistypes um, in the Myers-Briggs. If you've just taken one test, normally people are, we've found one letter off. You can be like two or three letters off, but a lot of times um, it's like one letter off. So maybe check out, if this video doesn't resonate, um, check out like ESTP is a big one to check out. Um, INTP, ISFP, or ISTJ. <laughs> yeah, more likely the first two. Yeah, the reason I say that's because ISTPs are like dominant thinkers, and like ISFPs are dominant feelers, and so there's not usually a lot. Yeah, it's usually the second, third that people have the issues with. It's not usually the first, but it could be. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So I want to give an overview of the function. So I've got this whiteboard on the screen. Cool. Or I will. Um, so their first function is introverted thinking. And so it's turning inward. So it's like inside your head. So internal and then like thinking. So it's what you think about things. And a lot of times it can be a lot about distinctions and splitting hairs. It could be very technical language, but it's very precise, very technical. Um, and it's not the bossy kind of thinking it's, but it's internal, um, can be like slow, methodical, very precise because Whereas extroverted thinking, I feel like values speed over technicality. I feel like introverted thinking values technicality over speed because mm -hmm. you, it's quite perfectionistic, quite skilled, and it takes some time to get that. Um, their second function is extroverted sensing. So it's the external, so extra external. And then sensing is like what you can experience through your senses. So like 
everyone has eyes, every, you know, everyone, ex, you know, is experiencing things sensorily. But if you have this as one of your functions, it's something you're really tuned into and you spend time kind of combing over that. So you're really mm-hmm. focused on what's happening externally. And when you're focused on what hap- what's happening externally, that's pretty present. You're very present in the moment. To be noticing what's happening right now, you have to be very present. Um, so sometimes ISTPs are not enough in that function, but really healthy ones are. And that's part of what makes them super good at sports, being really present, eye on the ball, that type of thing. Um, their third function is introverted intuition. So it's an inward processing. And then intuition are things that are not currently present. So sensing and intuition are opposite. So if sensing is what you're experiencing right now, intuition is kind of what's not happening. It's like reading between the lines. So sensing is like the lines, what you're reading. And then intuition is like what's between the lines. So it's an inward processing of kind of the what could be. And so there's a lot of things that fall into that what could be. The future is something that what could be. So it's an inward processing of the future. And it could be patterns. Like, you know, this person's not saying this thing, but this is what they meant. There's, There's kind of that element. So it's kind of a noticing of patterns what could be going on behind the scenes uh the fourth function is extroverted feeling so extroverted meaning external and then feeling meaning like the you know the feelings that could be the emotions um how do how do we all feel about talking about politics is that allowed or is it not allowed so how do we it's it can create norms like how are we feeling about this it can create etiquette like we're all feeling like it's not good to be you know to have your elbows on the table or something like it's not limited to that but it is oriented on the external feelings of the group. And then because it's ISTP's fourth function, sometimes it's underused, especially like if you're in your twenties. So yeah, one thing to note is ISTPs don't have any introverted feeling. In fact, it would be the eighth function if you're using an eight function model. So they're not, you know, they're not super sensitive. They're not super focused on their internal feelings. And so if you feel that you are focused on your internal feelings, sometimes I think maybe look into another type that has introverted feeling or, and, Also, if you feel like you're kind of bossy leadership oriented, you might want to look into like a TJ type as opposed to a TP type because they have the inner feelings and kind of that external thinking that's kind of bossy. So yeah, that's kind of a lot. Okay, so let's get into what we find annoying. That's it. Okay, so you can go and start. TI, what do you got? All right. Um, We touched on a little bit. TI is really precise um, and it, it takes its time explaining things and doing things. I've noticed when they're explaining things, it can be difficult to understand because they are so precise. So, for example, like ICPs who are into cars might go into, and I don't know cars at all, so I can't even use any terms, but really specific terms about like the how the engine works and all the you know pumps and the stuff that make the engine work. And most people are going to be like, God, I don't know what you're saying. Um, so whatever their subgenre is, whatever they're interested in, they probably know all of the language around that because they've taken the time to study it. They've been around it. And so then when they explain things, they just think through this lens of really precise terms that can be hard to. Yes, follow. I had that thing. We don't share what we have written down. I had that thing written down in this box, technical speech. It's, <laughs> man, okay, my dad will explain something about cars. Okay, so then he uses all these, you know, 80 terms in one sentence that I do not know what they are. So then... Then I'm sitting there and I'm like, okay, he's going to think I'm stupid. I'm like, I'm going to have to ask what these 80 terms mean. I'm going to have to go term by term. I don't remember what the term, we have so many terms here. Then when they explain a term, it's with more terms that I do not know. I'm like, okay, if you're talking about a car, here are the terms I know. Steering wheel, seats, okay, (laughs) these are terms I know. I do not know rotor. I don't know what it's like. I don't know what a piston is. I don't know what any of this stuff is. And then we're disappointing all the ISTPs watching. (laughs) Yeah, they're like, why? (laughs) I do not know. They're, no, they're going to explain it to us in the comments. That's a classic ISTP thing. As soon as I say I don't know something, then they're like, oh, yeah, let me explain it to you. And I'm like, I don't I don't want to know, actually. I'm not into cars, so I don't want to know anything about them. I'm choosing to be ignorant. <laughs> they probably don't like that. Um, yeah, the other part of that, that with the vocab comes in is they will correct people a lot, technically. Mm-hmm. So, like, this is happening. You, you uh, complimented this ISTP. I can't, and I can't, I was there, but I can't remember what the term was. So you were like, you're like, I really like your shirt. It's just like a compliment or whatever. And then they're like, it's not a shirt. It's a pullover. Or it's like a t-shirt or, or something. something. It was something. <laughs> it was something so technical. And you're like, thank you is the correct response. <laughs> it's, like, it's like, it's this missing the big point of something because one thing was off. You know, you notice sometimes I like even like a, oh, do you remember like May of 2012 when... We did this boating trip, and I, oh, at, it was April of 2012. Like, there might be a correction like that. Like, a yeah. very small difference that 
Yeah. It's not a part of the story. Yeah, but... it doesn't. It's not a problem. The point. Yeah, but I think they care a lot about the details. Like every detail makes the point. Yeah. <laughs> that cracks me up. So every time that happens now, this was this is an example of when you learn about typology, you shouldn't hate types more. It should give you more understanding. And this was something that used to annoy me so bad when people would correct little things. I just thought they were super prideful and I hate it. And this is an example of where I got more of an appreciation for it once I understood the functions. And so I think I think that that lend, that kind of demonstrates some of the value of typology. Yeah. Um, thing I was going to mention is can be know-it-all-ish. Um, in two cases, I've noticed like know it all, um, when they're young, I know, I notice it a lot more when they're like teens, especially I was a, okay. I was a teacher, like middle school, high school teacher. And, um, yeah, upper high school, especially they get, they're getting more into SE. The SE is what's going to make them say the know it all stuff. And then the TI is what's going to make them think the know it all stuff sometimes. But I mean, sometimes not. And I think the other thing that makes this come out is just when they're unhealthy, you get some unhealthy, sad kind of ISTPs that, are not really aware that they're sad, but they're just kind of depressive and kind of lethargic. And so I find that there's kind of this know-it-all nature. What yeah. I like about ISTPs is they are so good with correction most of the time, mm -hmm. especially when they're healthy, um, which is why they correct technicalities in people a lot because they're that's how I think that's how they want it to be. It's like mm -hmm. I correct you when you're wrong, you correct me when I'm wrong, and I think that's what they like. Right. Not everybody's liking that, but <laughs> yeah, it makes it nice. Once I once I became aware of that, then it was nice. It's if I didn't like something, I could very directly say it, and I'm like, oh, yes, I won't do it again. Yeah, I see it being hard for them in, like, a world where etiquette is so valued, or, like, social niceties, where they're very direct and would just appreciate directness and frankness. Yeah, they don't yeah. want, like, this beating around the bush. Yeah. Yeah, I actually had this conversation. There was one ICP that kind of hurt my feelings, and so I'm starting off with all these, I'm trying to, like, soften the blow pretty much. I'm like, and I know that you had good intentions and, and you probably were doing, and I just was doing all these caveats and he's like, just tell me, what did I do? Tell me. <laughs> he, he like, you don't need to <laughs> shield my feelings. What did I do? <laughs> it was pretty funny. Um, last thing I put for TI, this is sort of a bigger one. Um, and this may not apply to you. This is like unhealthy types, but TI is really good at personal responsibility. And we, we were just talking about this earlier today that um we've known actually like most of the ISTPs we know that they they have this personal responsibility for themselves and with other people and I think they're really good at people in their lives correcting them if they're doing something wrong or that offends them they're really good at that bringing personal responsibility to everyone else um and I appreciate that I've noticed with significant others or people who are really close to them they can sometimes like wave that to the point where they're assuming personal responsibility for themselves but they're also assuming personal responsibility for the other person and i don't think i really have to explain why that's detrimental to an istp because i think you guys understand that if you take responsibility for someone else you know that's disempowering them to not take personal responsibility for themselves so i've noticed that with istps a lot of times or with sfjs or more maybe submissive types and can tend to do that yeah, it's almost like you, I wouldn't think of ISTPs as being in codependent relationships a lot. That's not something that I would just mm -hmm. immediately think. But as I was combing through this list, they are with a lot of SFJs, which is, I think, there's a good like a symbiotic match relationship. Made match made in heaven, the SFJs and the STPs. And I notice SFJs getting these codependent relationships a lot. And so I think then the STP is kind of along for the ride. Um, and so you get this SFJ for, could be for example, unhealthy SFJ, for example, and they're just not taking care of themselves or, um, you know, causing a lot of drama and the ISTP then has responsibility for themselves and they include their spouse in that. And so the SFJ or, or whoever the partner is ends up getting kind of a free pass, sort of. Which is annoying because normally the ISTPs are really good, I think, at correcting that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. But they're, and again, this might not apply, but... It's sometimes in their closest relationships, they might not do that same standard for their closest people, which is detrimental, I think. Yeah, you get kind of this um, uh, knight in shining armor, damsel in distress thing, where it's almost like they can expect, the, it's like they have low expectations of their spouse. They have really high expectations of themselves. Like, I need to make sure that this family's doing well, and I need to make sure this. It's like they have all this weight of responsibility on their back that it's like they think it's their responsibility for the health of um 
the damsel in distress or whatever. But if you're in that, if you're in the reverse role, then it's kind of disempowering yeah. to be like, oh, you have all the responsibility. I have no other responsibility, I guess. You know, it, I don't know. It's very, dis- it kind of is disempowering. Yeah. I think they understand. Um, yeah. And yeah, the other point that I had was um, technical speech, which we already talked about. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Extroverted sensing. One thing that I talked about that I've noticed, it's gotten, um, it seems like it's helped. I'll just explain. So ISTP, I've known several ISTPs. I'm going through my list. Several ISTPs that had alcohol issues, um, specifically with like beer. Now, when I say alcohol issues, it's always very um, dependent on the type. You know what I mean? For ISTPs, them having alcohol issues, is it's typically them saying that they had like three beers a night and they just, they're like, that was too much. I, that's not the type of person I want to be. So they gave it up. So I appreciate them like then giving up alcohol. But I can notice if you know the ISTP before they get to that stage, they can have some like alcohol issues kind of this numbing out not be present using their like mm-hmm. enjoying their senses but it's almost like this um escaping of the present moment kind of into an eye that's like i don't want to be present it's too hard to be present so it's like kind of some sensing because it's you know fear but not enough to yeah yeah i've noticed i mean these are going to relate because ni and se are on an axis so mm-hmm. um i think i put this for ni instead of se but it can be a tendency especially for for both isfps my type and istps to withdraw into that ni function um and so they can be hard to draw out into things like like going outside or doing doing things like actually uh, going in group settings i've noticed um, with istps that it can be hard to get them to do things even though when they do it like if actually um, go with the group or go hang out with people or do an activity they really enjoy it and they love it but to get them there it's like they're in their ni home and don't really want to get out of it yes yeah it's i know a lot of ISTPs that seem like they're really into um you know physical activity like they might like fireworks or they might like guns or they might like working on cars or tennis or you know there's all sorts of different hobbies i've seen ISTPs like and it's hard to get them to say yes so i'll like be like hey, do you want to go play tennis or something, you know, something that's their favorite activity? And they're like, I don't know, I just don't feel like it. And the, it's just kind of, it is kind of this, like, lethargic. And then they, they freaking love it once you get them out there, but it's almost mm-hmm. like you got, it's like pulling teeth to get them to do stuff they like. Yeah. It's like that TI and I mix. They're more comfortable just thinking about the activity and, like, studying, like, the best tennis tactics or studying... Um, and I've noticed that with, with myself and so that low and I also, but just studying the things as a substitute for actual extroverted sensing, which is experiencing the thing. Um, so, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, what do you got for an eye? Um, uh, one thing I've noticed, and this is again for ISFPs also with the low and I, um, they can get looped in lack of movement slash like constant processing and not doing. So... Um, I've noticed the over, like, analysis paralysis, I think is a good word for um, ISPs. They can get stuck in, like, this, I don't know what to do, so I'm going to stay here and keep thinking about it. And, um, yeah, there's a tendency to just not do because they're stuck thinking about what to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I notice a lot of ISTPs end up kind of wasting um, a lot of their time away. It's like they'll go to work. They come home, they work on the car, and then they watch TV for hours mm. or football for hours or that's part of that stagnation, I think, when it helps. Yeah. I noticed some, uh, kind of surprising things, kind of some OCD type tendencies, not that they have OCD, but just kind mm. of this very, um, kind of very particular with their space and how um, clean things are and this is the way that it's done. It's part of that TI. I think TI can be very, um, yeah technical sort of i'm not sure exactly how to describe that but it can be very very particular about their space and how their tools are hung up and <laughs> <laughs> yeah and again especially in unhealthy types mm-hmm. they'll tend to have more of those ocd tendencies of, this has to be exactly right and yeah yeah part of back to that like whatever down stagnation is there can be kind of this like procrastination or like this kind of um i don't want to go to the dentist, I've got this cavity, I'm just going to deal with it, I'm not going to go to the dentist or whatever. Kind of this, like, procrastination mm. for years. That's an example of getting away from the senses and into the, and I was push it off for a long time. Yeah. Okay, extra feeling. 
Oh, this one is kind of okay. I have one that's kind of a funny one. It was like a casual roast is what I'm going to call it. They just like casually roasted me. I don't <laughs> even think they realized that they did it. So, okay. I was dropping off Garrett and his friend. They were going on a trip together. So I dropped them. I was dropping them off at the airport. It happened to be on 9-11. So, and, pe- and there was talk going on about if something was going to happen. Like probably like there was 9-11. So I mentioned, I was like, are you guys nervous to fly on 9-11 or anything? I'm just kind of like casually talking about it. And <laughs> so ISTP. Uh, well, also, so we'd been talking, like, beforehand, uh, before mm-hmm. we had gone to pick up this ISTP. Mm-hmm. And you were mentioning, like, being sort of fearful of this plane thing. Mm-hmm. And so, mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. sort of setting the scene. I was then. nervous that he was flying. Because there was talk about 9-11 stuff, and he was flying across country. And so I was, I was nervous about it. Yeah. Um, but so anyway, so then I asked this ISTP, like, are you nervous about it? And he's like, he's like well... You know, some people can choose to live their lives in fear, but you never know what's going to happen. At the end of the day, what's going to happen is going to happen, and I don't like to live my life in fear like some people. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> I was like, well, there we go. <laughs> I'm not sure that he even knew. No. He probably didn't know that I was nervous, so he probably didn't realize that he had just... But I feel like if I'm asking the question, I must have some vested interest in it or something, but... <laughs> yeah, no, and that's, and that's the mentor I was talking about. He's a really healthy ISDP that we know. Yeah. So I think he has SE really high... Um, he, he's developed that, so he has a very... He's not going to get worried. Like, that NI loop that we talked about, healthy ISTPs don't get wrapped up in, like, these fearful, like, paralysis. He's very active in his life, and... SE's super bold. SE's bold, yeah. Yeah, sure. TI and SE together, bold. Mm-hmm. Not particularly fearful. I think that's great. Yeah. Um, there can be, again, with ISTPs, a lack of social awareness. Um, so I think that... TI dominant um, cares about directness and but it can come off blunt it can say things that that hurt people's feelings without even noticing that it's hurting people's feelings Um, I've noticed that sometimes yeah charge that oh yeah we gotta charge your thing I was gonna say that I noticed some like not as many like sexist jokes as ESTPs per se but like every now and then this is what I think happens ESTP said a sexist joke ISTP heard it and now they like say it sometimes <laughs> this is that's what I imagine to have happened maybe it didn't happen but that's what I think like for example for example someone asked an ISTP like um did you I don't know like did you, I don't know what the question was it, like something that they do every day like did did you uh go to work today or something and the ISTP responds, does Dolly Parton sleep on her back? And you're like, like, did you say that right now? <laughs> and it's like this. I don't think that they mean, and okay, this is me assuming good intent. I don't think that they mean anything by it. They're just like, okay, if you have big boobs, it'd be uncomfortable to sleep on them. So they probably sleep on their back. May, okay, that's me assuming good intent. Okay, it's just a mechanical. I'm just putting myself, okay, it's a mechanical. Just a, no, and nothing, nothing bad meant by it. But then when you're sitting there, then you're sitting there, like, all the women in the room are, like, get so, that's the thing, it gets so uncomfortable. The guys are cracking up, the women are sitting there pretty uncomfortable. Because it's just, like, we're sitting there in a normal conversation talking about work or whatever we're talking about. There's this, like, sexualization joke of women being brought in that just... Yeah, I mentioned this with the, in the ESCP video as well. I think it might be a combination of SE with that low FE, um, but... When you're telling jokes, I've noticed with both STPs, they can often tell sort of sexist jokes, um, and it's like a, like, it just takes an awareness, like a good FE, I think, reads the room and is able to tell, does everyone in this room like this joke? Like, if I'm telling a joke about a female, are the females in this room responding well? Um, or there can be racist jokes, too, I've noticed. So, mm-hmm. when you're telling jokes, also just... Use use FE or develop FE enough to tell if the people around you, not just, especially the people who would be sort of uh, similar to the joke, well, who the joke's about, mm-hmm. um, so that you're not, you know, overstepping those social bounds. And I think similar with the STP, the ESTP, there can be this sense of like people are just being too sensitive. Like, what's the deal with people? They're being too sensitive. Like, a lot of times, like if someone speaks up, that type of joke, you get the vibe that the ISTP is like, ah, eh, they're being sensitive. But a lot of times it's an FI user that brings up the objection. And so I feel that TPs look at FI users as if they're sensitive. And they are. I mean, there are things about it, FI users that are sensitive for sure. But in instances like this, it's not so much sensitivity as it is a moral objection. Because FI is about, you know, how I feel about things, the convictions I have, and it can be about morals. And so a lot of times it's like, this is not something that I would say. I don't think it's, a, you know, 
a very moral thing to say. Um, the other thing, <laughs> also just a sexual uh, gender awkwardness in general. There's kind of a gender awkwardness, which I think is so funny to watch. Have you ever seen like an ISTP flirt? It's so funny. Okay, anyways, here's the example. Okay, Garrett does this thing where he, if there's an SE user, he starts these bromances with them or whatever. So there'll be an old man that's an ISTP, he plays tennis with yeah, or whatever. Yeah, especially STPs. Yes, and <laughs> Garrett will be like, oh, hey, sexy man. So he says this to this old man. Now the ISTP at first gets pretty uncomfortable. They're like, you can tell they're really taken aback. Man called me sexy. I am not gay. What is happening? <laughs> they, I don't know. They're just, you can just see there's this whole compute thing happening. After, over time, after Garrett calls them sexy over the course of, you know, a couple weeks, after Garrett's done it like the fifth time, then they start joining in. Okay, but then there's this, there's this like funny instance of this thing that happens. So Garrett and I show up to this event. There's this old guy, ISTP, and Garrett like whistles at him and goes, hey, sexy. And this guy goes, oh, hey, sexy people. But then he computes, then he realizes he just called me sexy inadvertently by saying, like, hey, sexy people. So then he's all nervous because he realizes he just inadvertently called me sexy. And he's like, uh, yeah, no. And then they start digging themselves in a hole, like, I don't mean that I, I don't mean to, I not, I would never say that about you. I do not think that you're sexy. And like, well, I <laughs> and then they get themselves into this whole STPs and this whole digging. It's like, I do not think you're sexy. Well, I mean, you are an attractive young lady. <laughs> and you're like, Okay. <laughs> that's just that one's not like that one's not morally offensive. That one's more just like awkward and funny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, I didn't even write that one down. I don't know. I'll call that gender awkwardness. <laughs> Correct me up. There was another example of that where it was like this Halloween. It was like this Halloween thing. This girl comes in dressed in like the superhero outfit or whatever, and this guy he's like. He's like, oh yeah, that's a sexy outfit. And he's like, then he realizes what he said, and then he's like, <laughs> I'm like, I suppose you gotta, yeah. you gotta work on some yeah. of this stuff, <laughs> this gender stuff you say. <laughs> work on the FE. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, that's I okay. So I think the advice. Yeah, general growth advice. General growth advice uh, is extroverted sensing <laughs> makes you super present, super aware in the moment. Um, which I think is super helpful. It's it's very um, it's a very empowering function because it's like, what can we do in the moment? It's not like this big, massive, you know, conspiracy is happening to you. But it's like, what can I do? This is what we can do, and um, it's very it it makes you find solutions a lot more. If, you've got, if you're more present, you can find a lot more solutions than if you're really like associated. It gives you a lot of energy, makes you a lot healthier. Uh, I think extroverted feeling. I think guys to peas are pretty aware of their extroverted feeling issues, so I feel kind of bad for them poking on that, but. I think that it's, you know, really helpful just to make sure that if you tell a joke, like, everyone finds it funny. Like, an F.E. for everyone. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I find a lot of ISTPs are actually um, too, I don't know what they call it, too, but just, like, too in their heads or too quiet. Maybe because they're worried about saying the wrong thing, maybe. or And so I would like to just hear more from ISTPs. I would like ISTPs to be more chatty. I'd like to... I like to see them come out to events like more often, especially if it's in your SE realm. I think ISTPs can be pretty introverted, but if you get into that extroverted sensing, like events that are SE oriented, like people are going water skiing or people are playing tennis or, you know, things that are SE oriented, I think those are the times when you do best in extroverted settings. Yeah. Yeah, my biggest advice for ISTPs would be to get out into the world more. So if, I guess, if you've been delaying decisions like maybe there's a business you want to start and you've been analyzing it for a year just start it just start doing things get into se and actually analyzing's not helping it's just hurting you at this point if you if you're in a, like a long-term relation i've known a few icps that have been in long-term relationships like years and just are i think afraid to commit to that marriage if you know you've been in the ni loop try to get into se like is this what i want to do make a decision and so there's there's bigger things in your life that you just Sometimes you need to just step out and do, and don't just think on. Um, also, getting into SE with um, a simple way is like s sports or hobbies. So if you have a hobby you like or a sport you like, if not, find one. But if I'm, I'm sure most of you do, don't just study about it. Do it with other people. Bring other people into it so they're actually getting involvement with um, extroversion and getting outside. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, I want to reiterate that I love ISTPs. Like, I made the list of ISTPs, and I'm like, these are some great people. Mm -hmm. I love how principled they are. I love the amount of personal responsibility they take. The things we wrote down here, these are 
these are on, I had to really think of like the unhealthy ISTPs I know, I would say. The vast majority of the time, it's not this bad, you know, storm in the capital and whatnot. <laughs> but yeah. but I, I think most of the time they're a lot more principled and I love their sense of personal responsibility. And they're mm-hmm. also just fun. Yeah. Yeah. They're great. Sweet. Anything else? No, I think that's it. Sweet.